very beautiful morning to our honorable dignitaries of Noida International University, esteemed guests of honor, respected convener, respected directors and heads from various schools, staff members and dear students. On behalf of Noida International University, welcome you all to the Skill Development Cell in association with Shyam Lal College, University of Delhi. This event has been organized under the guidance of our honorable dignitaries and patrons, Dr. Devesh Kumar Singh, Honorable Chairman, Noida International University, Dr. Vikram Singh, Honorable Chancellor, Noida International University, Professor Dr. Uma Bharadwaj, Honorable Vice Chancellor, Noida International University, Professor Dr. Prasenjit Kumar, Honorable Pro Vice Chancellor, Noida International University, Dr. Ritesh Bharadwaj, Convener, Skill Development Cell, Sham Lal College, Evening, University of Delhi. Honorable Chancellor of Noida International University, Dr. Vikram Singh, Honorable Vice Chancellor of the Noida International University, Professor Uma Bhardwaji. Today's expert and esteemed guest of the today's function, Professor Dr. Ramesh C. Gorji, Dr. Bhardwaj, all the colleagues, students, and dear fellows. It's a very momentary step for us today that we are here to discuss the topic, the research, publication and ethics. It's very important to us for every aspect in educational institutions that we have to be following very different domains and ethical portfolios. If we talk about the ethics, ethics is a very general phenomena which talks about that what should be and what should not be. It's a kind of the values which try to be escalate the individuals that what is wrong and what is right. But here if we talk about that in educational institutions portfolios that what could be the different ethics. The different ethics could be defined in that professional ethics, ethics of the teaching, ethics of the behavior and ethics of the research and programs. But today we are just taking the one off the topic that ethics for the research and publications. I proudly announce that the today, the august presence of that eminent expert among us will enlighten us towards the acknowledgement and increasement of the encyclopedia that how we should be moved ahead towards the ethical standards in the research and publications. So not to Taking the too much time, I wish and extend my warm wishes today's successful for the event and highly welcome Professor Gore to be the part of this event and spare the timing for us. I extend my welcome to him. Thank you. Thank you very much. A very good morning to all of you. Uh, Honorable the Chairman in absentia, Dr. Devesh Singh Ji, the Honorable Chancellor of the University, Dr. Vikram Singh Ji, who is a great motivational factor for all of us here in the campus. His presence means a lot of energy is surrounding you, uh, which is reflected uh, from his body language anytime a very positive personality, great fan of him. Uh, one of the reason being here in this university, he is one of the personality to whom I interacted and then took the decision there and then, yes, I'm going to be the part of this university. Uh, the star of the day today, and Dr. God. I'll share with you, let me welcome all of them, the Pro Vice Chancellor of the University and Dr. Ritesh Bhardwaj from the Shamlal College, Delhi University. Uh, Dr. Bhardwaj told me that he is in good relation. I was just one day interacting that uh, I'm thinking something innovative and uh, I would like to see the director of National School of Drama. He said, ma'am, I have very good relationships with him, then why don't you arrange a meeting of mine with him so we can really think something innovative, you know, out of box and think of uh, getting the MOU done on various areas. And I'm sure the uh, director, uh, dean of the school, liberal arts, is going to interact with him and we can think of it. When I met him, in the beginning, he was not very open to, you know, sign the MOU with the private universities, not his mistake because 
this is what some of the private universities were not doing a very good job. Naturally, people have a lot of reservation where it's difficult, you know, to make them to understand what quality means. Because I'm a quality person, I believe in quality and likes to extend quality to all. I can't compromise on quality. Then uh, we have a very good discussion, healthy discussion. Then uh, during the interaction, I came to know he was the person who was behind that uh, plagiarism guidelines, which were notified by the UGC on 31st July 2018. And uh, he was also the uh, chairman of the committee for designing the syllabi of ethics and publication, which became in 2018 mandatory for the coursework for all the uh, research scholars. When I came to know all this, then I invited him to the university that you should definitely come and deliver a lecture someday to our university. Actually, uh, I tell you, when we talk about the uh, plagiarism and all, I was the one. Since 2015-16, there was a meeting of the North Zone with the UGC chairman, and I was the one who was, used to be very vocal among all the vice chancellors, that why are we not working on the plagiarism? Because I see the review and literature part of the research in the thesis, generally a cut, copy, and paste, nothing else. Since that time, there was no uh, sensitivity or uh, sensitization regarding the plagiarism part. So this is when the guideline came in 2018. I was so happy and immediately I implemented to the university where I was working. That time I was working with the medical university where it was a big challenge. The doctors used to think, plagiarism, what do you mean by plagiarism? Review and literature? No, how can we change the language? So you know that's a big challenge that only the plagiarism can be found in your review and literature. Rest results are yours, discussions are yours. So I'm sure he is going to throw a big light on ethics and publication, although ethics is synonymous to life, but ethics and publication is also something very important. So I welcome Dr. Gaur to this university and to enlighten all of you on ethics and publication. Thank you. You have not gathered to listen to me. You are here to listen to the legendary luminaries who are on the dais. Respected Professor Ramesh C. Gaur, sir. Respected Professor Ritesh Bharadwajji. Our Vice Chancellor, Professor Uma Bharadwajji. Our Pro VC, Professor Prasen Ji Ji. Now, I'll talk a little bit about Hindi. When the Lord is the Lord, He gives the rain. When the Lord is the Lord, He gives the rain to you. He gives the rain to you. He gives the rain to you. और जब भगवान देने के उतारू होते हैं तो भारद्वाज ऐसी वाइस चांसलर देते हैं ब्लेसिंग कम इन मेरी फॉर्म्स चारों तरफ प्रभु की बरकतें बरस रही हैं देखो हाउ फॉर्चुनेट ऑल ऑफ यू आर सी हिज मर्सीज टॉकिंग ऑफ प्रोफेशनल एथिक्स एंड रिसर्च आप लोग बड़े खुशकिस्मत हैं मेरे गाइड ने कहा था यू हैव ज्वाइन रिसर्च पांच साल से पहले पीएचडी की बात मत कीजिए डोंट टॉक ऑफ पीएचडी बिफोर फाइव इयर्स एंड वी आर वेरी लिबरल पीपल प्रोफेसर दिव्य दर्शन पंत इलाहाबाद यूनिवर्सिटी एट टू एट डेली ओनली थ्री हॉलीडे यू कैन यू गेट थ्री हॉलीडेज इन अयर वन दिवाली वन होली एंड वन इफ योर सिस्टर और यू आर गेटिंग मैरिड द थर्ड डे 362 days, 8 to 8. They were unsparing. Forget plagiarism. One sentence out of sync. And he said, the construction of your sentences is very clumsy. The construction of your sentence and paragraphs, absolutely pedestrian. I mean, they were so unsparing that you had to take a carpool when you reached home. He would demolish you totally. But when the paper came out in Scientific American, it wasn't Divya Darshan, Pant or Vikram. It was Singh Vikram, Pant Divya Darshan. My name was first and the guy's name was They are legendary figures. I can say that I had the privilege of working with such legendary figures. We started with five-day cricket test matches. We came down to one day, then we came to 2020, our 2020 Gazan. After five years, when you come for interview and ask you what was your topic of PhD, Sahib, I worked with you five years ago. 
अरे आई वॉक टू पी एच डी बिफोर यूर बॉर्न प्लांट फिजियोलॉजी बाय रॉबर्ट एम डेवलिन एटम्स इन केमिकल बाइंडिंग बाय फ्रिश रेस्पिरेशन बाय जोसेफ जेरिको जरमाया हेमलिन देर वॉज नथिंग दो शॉर्टकट्स प्रोफेसर गॉड विल टेल देर आर नो शॉर्टकट्स अ पी एच डी इज टेकिंग अप अ प्रोफेशन लिव इट आई गिव यू स्मॉल एलेक्डोट ऑफ आर डब्ल्यू एमरसन दिस इज वॉट ऑल रिसर्च इज ऑल अबाउट इन वॉट रिसर्च दैट यू डाइव डीप इन टू इट लिटल नॉलेज इज अ डेंजरस थिंग आर डब्ल्यू एमरसन वो सिटिंग इन इज लाइब्रेरी वर्किंग ऑन इज डिजर्टेशन फॉर अ पी एच डी एट सेवन इन द मॉर्निंग His friend came and sat next to him. The maid came and served breakfast. R. W. Emerson did not raise his head. The friend ate up the breakfast, and after three hours, R. W. Emerson saw the empty tray and his friend. Oh, you have come late. Otherwise, we would have had the breakfast together. That was the level of concentration that R. W. Emerson did not even realize that his friend had had the breakfast. He did not have the breakfast, but he saw the empty tray and realized. that perhaps he must have had the breakfast this is the application your smartphone is causing you your fortune ab main samajhta hu jis din library mein koi bachcha dikhai padta hai mithai batta baatne ka samay hai sitting in the library and going and watching your smartphone 500 times a day i would advise you be poor when are W. Rowling wanted to write that famous book of hers. She went into hibernation for 21 days and sat there and wrote the book and the masterpiece, which became the bestseller and broke all records. Deep work, nothing comes cheap. Genius is 99 percent perspiration, 1 percent inspiration. Genius is 99 percent perspiration, 1 percent inspiration. 12 hours a day if you cannot devote to your research then i think you are barking up the wrong tree you are not cut for research you are not cut for research if you are incapable of working 12 hours a day browsing being on the social media interacting with friends and chums i don't think that you are cut for research your house and your study becomes your hermitage you live like a hermit for the time that you are there for research आप तो कहते हैं सर ढाई साल में नहीं तुम कहीं और जाते हो कहीं और जाइए रास्ता आने का भी खुला है जाने का और ज्यादा खुला बट इफ यू आर देर क्वालिटी रिसर्च कम्स एट अ प्राइस बोथ पर्सनल हैव हायर स्टैंडर्ड्स फॉर योर सेल्फ वर्क मोर देन अदर्स वर्क मोर देन द पीयर्स सो दैट वेन यू गिव आउट योर रिसर्च पीपल में से दिस इज लैंडमार्क दिस इज पाथ ब्रेकिंग this is indeed original there is thesis and there is antithesis and from that emerges synthesis there are those who get a phd and there are those who get a doctorate that is original that is for us when there is a phd or research or a research paper with ethics that research paper and that phd comes with an emotional and a spiritual quotient also otherwise as ma'am had said cut copy paste i can big, write a thesis in 24 hours you tell me the subject and the thesis will be ready in 24 hours but that even the raddi wala will not take he will ask me money ki aapki thesis aisi hai ki hame paisa dijiye aapki third class thesis ko le jaake raddi mein dustbin mein dal dege I expect the highest of standards from you, and that is why the galaxy of wonderful speakers are here: Professor Ramesh Sigor, Professor Ritesh Bharadwaj, and of course the in-house brilliance that is there. Take advantage of that. Work hard. Work so hard. I once went to Stanford, and I found the researchers there. I went rather early at 8 a.m. and I'll end this topic. I found researchers studying there: coffee, bananas. and teachers i went again after six hours are they are still there coffee bananas and on the table i went again at six in the evening coffee bananas and students unka for how long would you say unka you can try coming at 12 o'clock at night also sir 
This is what research is all about. This is what research is. It doesn't come cheap. It is not easy, but it is perfectly doable. Get a copy of the book. I'll tell you how. Deep work. It is a brilliance comes at the exclusion of every other frivolous activity. Browsing on the smartphone, browsing the net, they are procrastination. And procrastination is the thief of time. Focus, focus, focus. All the very best. I'm sure you will turn out to be much better human beings. And by the time this session is over, there will be thousands of research papers that will be out when this session is over. But quality papers would be on your fingertips and garbage will be in thousands. Don't side with the garbage, side with the garbage. God bless you all. Thank you so much. Namaskar. When uh, you have a chance like, like uh, Professor Dr. Vikram Singh, anybody can come to the institute and feel motivated and blessed to have uh, his blessings because I'm a great fan of it and always uh, admire his uh, intellectual as well as leadership capabilities. And this Noida International University is so blessed to have a leader like him. So thank you, sir, for extending this invitation <laughs> to the director. You have a bison like Professor Uma Bharadwar, who is so persuasive. Because with current profile of mine, uh, I am regretting all invitation to go anywhere or speaking because uh, my time constant is a big issue right now. We have been celebrating a big event uh, during this Azadi Gamrat Mahosa. We are celebrating a theatre festival with 30 plays on Azadi starting next week and we are also producing a play on Kargil. So there are so many things uh, and I have dual responsibility. So here I am there because of two persons, Dr. Ma Bharatwaj and Dr. Ritin ba Ritesh Bharatwaj with my friend. So uh, I, I thank them because there is opportunity given to know all of you. Uh, and I uh, am grateful to Professor Prajandir Kumar for extending a warm welcome to me. So before starting my uh, lecture because uh, Whenever I see students, I feel motivated to share a few thoughts of mine. Uh, I don't think any great scientists, engineer, doctors are being produced by the teachers, with due respect to all teachers. Because the real leaders are born or they, they develop within the libraries. Because you can get a degree by teaching in a 45 minutes or one hour classroom lecture, but you cannot become a true professional until that you, you read yourself. Give you my example. <coughs> I was born in a very small place in Uttar Pradesh uh, near Aligarh and my education till 8th class was the school, one room school. And uh, when I, my parents uh, migrated to Delhi, I joined a, a, a government school in Delhi in 9th class. So that time the English medium, uh, the English subject was in UP schools from sixth class. But unfortunately, we don't have a teacher in that school where I was studying in my hometown. And when I I joined the school in Delhi, I was totally zero in English. And uh, the the first challenge I took when I passed out. I, although I was very good in maths and other subject, but I, I took up this as a challenge. And uh, in tenth class, I was having lowest marks in English because of my background. But I took up a challenge and uh, joined science as English medium in the eleventh class. Although I know I am very weak in English, but just I want to tell you that this is the motivation you need. Uh, nothing is impossible in this world. A person cannot do it. I'm a science graduate, chemistry honors, did computer science and PhD in library science. I was having multiple options to join a career and destiny took me to join as a librarian. But uh, wherever I have worked, I always try to innovate and try to find out new ways of doing things. When I was in CSIR, yes, there is an institute called Central Road Research Institute. I developed the expertise in research publications. 
how publishing is all about. When I went to a, a private company called Bris uh, in form of service, uh, business uh, equity services, I was in equity research division. I was zero in finance because I never studied finance. But that time the company given me the res responsibility to start a newsletter. That is a forecasting right, newsletter, how to forecast. And I learned all those uh, aspects of financial research. When I was in IMT Ghaziabad, I developed the expertise on reasoning management. My PhD topic was on reasoning management. Like when I gone through the Michael Hammer and James CMP and reach those engineering corporation and all those things that motivates me. And I started a journal in IMT as a paradigm, which is still uh, being published in one of the most reputed journal in uh, business school. Although that was not my area by developed expertise. And when I joined JNU, this research and publication ethics in a university like JNU in 2011, there was no such policies and guidelines. And believe me, I also was zero on research ethics and publication ethics at that time. I don't know what is plagiarism is all about. I developed the expertise and that helped me in developing a full-fledged system and guidelines and courses in JNU. And that later when I become a member of the plagiarism regulation committee, I was the only person with, without having a, had a position because there were five vice chancellor. There was a director of IIT, direct DG of ICMR. Those were the members of that committee which drafted these regulations. I was the only person that time I was the librarian in jail. So when, when I developed on this policy, I studied a lot, researched a lot, and then this policy gave me a right uh, idea that what is all about research misconduct, scientific misconduct, and all, all those things. IGNC I joined in 2004 because I went to JNU on deportation in 2011 and remained there for seven years. On cultural heritage, I am a science graduate but I don't know anything about cultural heritage and languages and everything. And whatever I learn, I learn in job. My, my, and, and, and on cultural heritage, I have been given so much respect and renowned and because of my work, the two UNESCO committees of which I have been nominated are the example of my work on cultural heritage. If you want to know more about that cultural heritage work, uh, June issue of Business World Education has come out with my interview which will give you the idea how, how much I thought about cultural heritage. And my appointment as a director of a National School of Drama having without any, any background of theatre was the example of my work on cultural heritage. Why I am narrating all those things to you? I have never studied all these subjects in any school or college. This is all I have studied in the libraries or in the books or on the internet. So if you want to become a good professional, you have to read a lot. Without having understanding of the subject you are working, you cannot become a good professional. And degree is just a degree. It doesn't make you a professional. You yourself can make you a good professional, whatever field you want to choose. Uh, we are in a multidisciplinary world and uh, there is no necessary background of any subject required to become a professional. Only thing is required your dedication, your determination to become a professional in any field. It's open to all. So knowledge is the most important thing. And uh, today I'm almost uh, at the level of uh, uh, Secretary Government of India in terms of salary because I am additional secretary level position holding an agency. This all comes to me because of my work. I never had any political affiliation or any kind of motivation to go to anybody to ask for anything. So you, you all young students sitting here, just make yourself that there is no replacement for hard work and sincerity. There is no replacement for the knowledge. You have to work hard. and. Uh, the sky is the only limit for you if you want to really uh, work and you want to do something. One word of advice for universities, private university like Noida International University. Uh, I have been traveling all over the world and I know the best of the university in the US are all private university. Uh, being a private university, you have a lot of advantages and disadvantages also. Advantages are that the system, the flexibility in working. You can discuss and take a decision without moving so many files, which is a mandatory requirement in government system, in government university. 
and i can tell you the future of indian education is lies in the private education system only because the way government universities are performing in last so many years there is a lot of uh, we have been opening so many universities but but uh, the teachers uh, resource of teachers or the finance is a big issue which i think private universities can very well manage but the only thing is that if you have to excel you have to focus on two important thing one is the quality research and another is quality education these are the only two areas which you need to improve and for that you need quality teachers you need quality researcher best environment unfortunately my interaction because i have been part of many private universities uh, as an expert and advisor i found that some of the private university hesitate in investing in infrastructure which is very very important Turnitin may be an expensive software, but if you have to ensure the quality research, you have to have such softwares. Because we are in the digital world, and technology is the most important thing. You have to invest in the libraries, because without having a quality resources, you cannot think of having a quality teachers or quality student. Because reading is must. When uh, Dr. Vikram Singh talks about that uh, libraries, people are not going to the libraries. See, I'm, I'm a different person. I don't believe that you are going to the library or not, because in so many years I've never been. Go, been I've been working library, but I never have an opportunity to sit in the library and read in the library. You have to have resources at your disposal, and remote access technologies, discovery services. These are the new technologies where that can extend the access beyond the boundary walls of the university or the library. So, university has to think in that way. to provide online access to the resources and you can read as per your convenience at your home while you are traveling or you you are at anywhere any place so it is not must nowadays to come to the library for the reading you can read anywhere any time and that kind of flexibility and the kind of support and research support services should be provided by a university system only then you can expect quality research and quality education my uh, like advice to the teachers like you have to be motivator you have to be a great mentor it is not just a job for salary uh i have been teaching various university at igncia i introduced nine pg diploma courses as a dean and five certificate courses despite of my on regular job i am able to start all those kids you have to consider that you are round of round the clock employee of the university 9 to 5 never works definitely you need time for a family also i'm not, i'm a person i i love my family i always eager to spend time with them but if you plan a time very well you can be accessible to the student you can be accessible to the university but planning is very important in that so i'm i'm sure that uh please uh, some of my advice uh, if you wish you can take it So now with this, uh, I think uh, I thank you all, and uh, now I'm, I would like to speak uh, on the topic which I have been invited for it, and looking forward to your uh, hearing my lecture. Thank you very much. So the topic I am going to speak is understanding research and publication ethics. Next slide. I think as a university, the most important thing is that all of you should know uh, UGC regulations because. All universities in India are uh, having certain mandatory guidelines from the UGC. So in this regard, I'm sure uh, the first regulation, which was uh, done in 2009, regulation 2009 for uh, minimum standards and procedure for the award of the Anthem degree. The important thing in this regulation is that every PhD thesis, Anthem thesis, has to be converted into a digital form. And it is to be submitted in a central repository created by a body of uh, UGC called Implement Center. So you have to make sure that your all thesis and uh, dissertation should go to this repository. And you have to sign an MOU with the Implement Center. And I think your university library can take this responsibility. The second important, which we were just talking about, I was the member of this UGC Promotion of Academic Integrity and. Prevention of plagiarism in higher education institution. Regulation 2018. This, this needs to be implemented. I will let you know more about this. Third is UGC KL is no quality reference journal. As a researcher, it is mandatory that 
you should publish your research only in the journal listed on the UGC care list. There is a portal, UGC care list, and all the journal list is available. And if you want to know more about, please note it down. I am having a YouTube channel in the name of Professor Ramesh Ghat. So there is a my talk, uh, how to choose quality journals. So you can listen my talk on this, and it will talk, give you the complete details about how you have to choose quality journals and how you will need to go through this UGC care list. Research and publication ethics. Uh, this is a two credit course which is mandatory for all PhD students. So your university has to design this course uh, and uh, you have to uh, uh, provide all the uh, teaching and uh, learning opportunity to PhD student in this research and publication ethics course. Then uh, many people are having doubt on self plagiarism. In 2019, UGC also given clarification uh, on self plagiarism. So this is a notification. I will let you know later in the slides about it. In 2020, uh, Professor Bhatnagar was the Vice Chancellor of uh, BH University at that time. He was the chairman of a committee which came out with these guidelines. This is a document uh, which talks about various kind of good academic research practice. So I recommend to all of you, particularly to teachers, must read it. This is available under open access on the website. And this gives you all the definitions and terminologies of one of the things proposed in this, uh, this this document is that every university should have, should have a research department or a good office uh, uh, like uh, office of academic research integrity. So you can think of considering creating a research department or office of academic research integrity. So these are the regulations and guidelines you must read. It. Next slide. And uh, the regulation 2080, basically is, these are the minimum guidelines which talks about like how to create awareness and training program on research and publication ethics, how to curb plagiarism. So you need to have good quality plagiarism reduction software in your university. And also as a university you have to constitute two level of academic integrity panel. One at institution level, their vice chancellor should be the chair of that committee. In guidelines, complete structure is given, composition is given. And second, every department should have a departmental level academic integrity panel. So suppose there is a department of liberal department of liberal ethics or liberal arts. So if there is any case of plagiarism, that department has to investigate and the report has to submit it to the institution level academic integrity panel. And that institution level academic integrity panel has to decide on the penalties or the punishment, quantum punishment. So I think these two things are mandatory for uh, all the universities to implement. And penalties have to be let down according to the UGC regulation. Up to 10% similarities are not comes under any punishment. This is uh, 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 excluded from punishment. Then uh, level 1, level 2, level 3, these are the similarity percentages accordingly you have to take a decision that what kind of punishment is required. Right? Next slide. And I recommend Noida International University should lay down a plagiarism policy in that uh, I think some of the topics which I have listed in this PPT because this PPT I have already given to the uh, your university and uh, it can be circulated to all faculty members and the researcher who are interested in reading more about it. So this uh, having these things in place, a plagiarism policy should be drafted by university and should be put on the website. Next slide. So, uh, what is academic integrity or research integrity? Uh, research integrity broadly refers to the thoughtful and honest adherence to relevant ethical, disciplinary and financial standards in promotion, design, conduct, evolution and sharing of research. And basically, uh, if you talk about uh, uh, other definition, uh, research integrity includes use of honest and verifiable, method, verifiable methods in proposing, performing and evaluating research, reporting research results with particular attention to adherence of rules, regulation and guidelines. So basically, you know, you, UGC has given some guidelines, your university is having some guidelines. There are a lot of professional associations, they have, they have laid down certain rules, regulation, professional code of conduct. So having all these rules, regulation, professional code of conduct 
implemented in your research process is all about research integrity. Next slide. And uh, when we talk about research ethics or ethics in research, it's a very broad topic. In this entire research process, there are various components. Starting from the problem formulation to finally dissemination of result, every step there are certain kind of ethics one has to follow. For example, honesty in selecting a topic, honesty in designing a questionnaire, honesty in data collection, honesty in data analysis, honesty in data publishing. So honesty comes into a different way at different level of the research. Similarly, uh, objectivity, integrity, carefulness, openness, reliability, fairness, all these components apply at different level in different context in the research ethics. And uh, you also need to be very careful about uh, intellectual property rights, uh, your rights as well as others' rights, and also a robust research methodology should be, because every research process has a defined research methodology, you have to follow that. You have to maintain the confidentiality of the research. You may be a researcher, you may be a reviewer, you may be an editor. So you have to maintain that confidentiality. And you have to require a quality publication. It is not just having a research just for sake of degree. And for supervisor also, you have to be a, a very, very, uh, a kind of motivation. A, 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 you have to ex show example of high mentorship in supervisor. Respect your colleagues, respect your students, and so social responsibility. Last two years, we all are suffering from a something called COVID, and many people believe this COVID was uh, or maybe leaked from a lab in China. If it is true, then this kind of research is harmful to the society. So you should not do any research which is which is against the society, which is against the human beings. So in that case, and there are certain issues like legality uh, and uh, there is kind of uh, animal and human subject production. So there are different codes of conduct or like when you are doing research on life sciences and biotechnology, there are several research code of conduct to be followed. So uh, this is a very, very broad topic. I cannot talk about all in this one hour talk. Basically, I will be talking on next slide, on one topic that is, next slide. Research and publication ethics. Ethics which are required when you publish a research in form of an article, in form of a book, a monograph, or thesis. So these research and publication ethics, which are also referred research misconduct or scientific misconduct, basically these with issues such as data errors, falsification, fabrication, and places. Basically, these are the kind of violation of professional code of conduct in our uh, publishing your article. It also deals with issues of co-authorship, data ownership, obtaining various kind of permission for images, data tables, or all kind of issues. It also deals with peer review system, various kind of conflict of interest, various kind of funding issues, uh, obtaining very kind of permission. So a set of common rules among authors, editors, reviewers, and publishers to protect integrity of the scientific report based on consensus about standards and ensuring the integrity. Basically, simply saying, when you publish a research article, readers should believe you that what you have published is your own research or own ideas. And whatever you use resources, you have duly given credit to that. That's a simple way of looking into research and publication ethics. Next slide. So let's discuss it in more detail. Next. Why do we do research? Next. To contribute or to extend knowledge. And how do we do this? By building on the work of others. Means reading research articles, books, blogs, or all kind of internet resources. There is no problem in reading. Otherwise, I will, uh, I will recommend you should read as much as you can. Reading is not an issue because without reading, no research is possible. Issue comes, next slide, when you report your research result in form of a research article or in form of a book or in form of a monograph thesis. So when you are writing a research report or thesis or article, you are expected to place your research in the right context. 
to show that you are aware of what else is happening through literature review, <coughs> to show that you understand where your work fits, very kind of paraphrasing, summarizing or uh, quotations. So your report must contain your ideas as well as ideas you have borrowed from other sources. Next slide. And at that juncture, you have to make a clear distinction between your own ideas and your opinion about others ideas or works, claims of others you are reporting and what actually uh, said by others means quotations. So this distinction is very important. Next slide. And why it is important? Not every report you write will necessarily be a discussion of your own novel or you know, research. Sometimes you will write reports summarizing existing research to solve well understood problems with existing solution like review research. So in that context, it is important to make this distinction because the reader, the examiner, the reviewer, they should know what is your idea and what you have borrowed from other sources. And if you are not able to make that distinction, you are committing a mistake. And what is that mistake? Next slide. And that is research scientific or research or scientific misconduct. Means fabrication, falsification, plagiarism, or any other practice that seriously deviates from practices commonly accepted in discipline or in the academic and research communities, generally in proposing, performing, reviewing, or reporting research and related activities. Next slide. First, fabrication, fake research or facetious research. Basically, it is an intentional act of making up data or results and recording or reporting them. Examples, in the social sciences, a researcher interviewed completing a questionnaire for a fictitious subject that was never interviewed. In the biological sciences, the creation of a data set for an experiment that was never actually conducted. The practice of adding fictitious data to a real data set collected during the actual experiment for the purpose of providing additional statistical validity. In clinical research, the insertion of a clinical note into the research record to indicate compliance with the element of protocol. These are few examples, but in the number of days. This is a kind of academic fraud. This is an intentional act of plagiarism because the person who is doing it very well knows this is wrong. Even that person is doing it. So this is the punishment is the only option. Give you an example. This is a CSIR lab in Chandigarh, I am back. So there was a researcher, he went to South Korea and after returning from South Korea, he talked to his supervisor that I have done some wonderful research. And uh, that, uh, based on that data, he published seven articles in different journals, including PLOS. And later it was found that it was totally a fake data. No such research was done by that student. Later definitely the student was also terminated and even supervisor was also terminated. As a supervisor, you have to be very careful. You will not get, get a reward for good research, but definitely you will get a punishment for a bad research if your student is going. So, uh, this is the example. Next slide. Falsification is the another uh, uh, example of academic fraud or uh, intentional act of plagiarism. It is more about manipulations, some real data, some manipulations. So, in this case, uh, manipulating. Research materials, equipment, or process, or changing or omitting, suppressing data or result without scientific or statistical justification, such that research is not accurately represented in the research report. This would include the misrepresentation of uncertainty during statistical analysis of the data. Some of the examples alteration of data to render a modification of the variances of the data, falsification of dates and experimental procedure in the study notebook. Misrepresenting the results from the statistical analysis, misrepresenting the methods of an experiment such as model used to conduct the experiment. This manipulation in multiple ways. So uh, this is also a person knows what he or she is doing even than they are doing it. So this is also a, a very, very clearly punishable offense. Next slide. Now when we talk about plagiarism, this is a word derived from a Latin word plagia, means to kidnap. It is an act of stealing someone's idea and passing it off in your own idea. And uh, simply you have borrowed some text or idea from some source and you are not citing the source. That's a simple plagiarism. And 
uh, it is found in all kind of uh, print, non-print, or digital, or uh, even audio, video, all kind of uh, text or video messages and materials. Next slide. We have already talked about intentional criticism, but there is something called unintentional criticism or accidental criticism. This is something you don't want to do it. But it is happening because of some kind of ignorance, some kind of like uh, uh, manipulations uh, uh, which are happening uh, without your knowledge. Mostly it is because of lack of proper knowledge about citations. Lack of uh, proper understanding of paraphrasing, summarizing, or don't know how to cite properly, quoting excessively. Many of you make quotations. Sometimes quotation is 30%, 40%. That's not an original research. Generally speaking, you should not have more than 50% quotation in your research, right? That's the ideal way of looking at quality research. Uh, you don't know how to present your voice. Uh, and also, you are not very familiar with uh, international style of documentation. Unfortunately, none of our curriculum, starting from school to college, is teaching you about referencing. We don't have any course. So, what is happening? People are, when they are reaching in masters or PhD, they are suddenly asked to follow the citations. And they are zero about that, because they have never studied it. So, I think somewhere, I am always recommending, along with this course, I also recommend it that we should have some course on graduation level also because when you are reaching a masters, you should know about all this. Language is another barrier. Like we come from different regions, different backgrounds. We are not very confident writing in English because most of the international writings are in English. English. So what we do, we try to copy from different sources and try to mix it up. So that is also resulting in a kind of accidental criticism. And the most of uh, uh, like uh, regular example or the uh, most problematic issue is referencing. When I started this alternative in JNU, there was three, four PhD thesis with 75 or 80 percent similarities. I was shocked because I was never expecting this kind of work in a university like JNU. So I called those students and I sit with them for a few hours and I tried to analyze what is the issue. Their understanding of citation was that. Sir, I have last me reference I have given you the copy of the copy. So they believe that by giving reference, they can take whatever they want. So that was lack of understanding about referencing. So that is not a case because you have to follow uh, the citation rules. So unintentionally, uh, plagiarism can be checked using any good quality plagiarism reduction software. Self plagiarism. This is another problem because many people believe this is my paper, this is my book. I can use as, as much as I want. This is not true. Your research writing is just a reference. So you have to follow all the rules what you are following for other reference. There is no exception between your reading, your writings and other writing. Uh, and there are a number of cases where people have been punished for this. There was a vice chancellor. She has to leave the university because of this case. There was a joint cry on that. Uh, so, more detailed definition of this UGC has clearly given that reproduction in part or whole of one's own previously published work without adequate citation and proper acknowledgement and claiming the most recent work as a new original for any academic advantage amount to be tax reciting means self -made. There is only one exception in this rule. If you are a PhD student, and as per the rules, PhD students are required to publish at least two research papers during the period of the research. So you can include your two papers or more than two papers if papers have been published during the period of the research on the topic of the research and you are the first author. In that case, you can include those research papers as it is in your thesis. This is not the option of this. This, this is the only exception, but if you want to publish that thesis as a book, it cannot be included. You have to remove it because book is a different document and thesis is an in-house document. So in -house, thesis is considered an in-house document for award of the degree only. It is not a uh, publication like book. 
right? So uh, this is a study done by uh, this uh, ITU, the transmission uh, This is just to help you in understanding different types of cases of plagiarism, like how people do it. So you can understand it that this is not just to help you in that uh, how to analyze, but also it will help you in understanding that you should not do this. Like uh, this is a computer terminology. This is not a standard terminology of types of plagiarism. This just help you in understanding. Cloud is just changing the name and you are putting everything there. So there was an example. Uh, in Madhya Pradesh, there is the university where Hasmeh did the PhD and PhD was uh, awarded. And same PhD thesis was submitted by his wife in another university by just changing the name. Unfortunately, the examiner was the same. <laughs> so, and that was long, long back sometime 20 years before. There was no turnitin uh, available in India. So, this is your and then. Uh, you are taking uh, a map, like major part of source and just changing few words, it is not allowed. Like uh, similarly, some uh, paraphrasing is not proper in this case also. You are remixing from different sources. Uh, this is not allowed. Hybrid, uh, some original thoughts, some copy. Recycle, like self plagiarism. Uh, you are copying your own material uh, again and again. and. Uh, Step is also like basically copied material from multiple sources without citation and uh, not properly uh, giving a uh, lot of example of uh, like you are quoting wrong citation. Some people do it because they just try to make fool. But uh, you cannot make uh, you are making yourself fool because nowadays it is very easy to find out wrong citation. Uh, similarly, and these are some of the examples like how uh, you can go into detail with my PPT. Generally, plagiarism is called uh, in true, uh, like minor plagiarism or major plagiarism. What is main minor plagiarism? Mostly all cases of unintentional plagiarism comes under minor plagiarism, like wrong paraphrasing, wrong quotation, or wrong citation. And generally, uh, this comes under the category of the lack of knowledge of principle of academic integrity or poor scholarship. See, basically my advice to those who are not very good in English, there is now other way of doing it. I know, if you are good in Hindi, first type your thesis in Hindi. And if you have to submit in English, now there are number of tools available to translate it. So get it translated and then take help of some language editor to get it corrected. But don't uh, do this kind of copy paste. Uh, there are number of ways with technology you can help you. And plagiarism, plagiarism is all cases of fabrication, falsification, or where you are using, uh, like you are taking maxi maximum content from uh, different sources. Consequences, uh, first of all, it is not just an ethical issues. Now, there are penalties. Uh, and don't believe that uh, you audit the PhD and now things are over. No, it will, it will never be over. Even after your death, the issue remains same. And there are penalties for all, uh, student, faculty, everybody comes under this uh, UGC regulation and every even staff comes under this UGC regulation and also otherwise also and penalties have to be brought the UGC regulation. You may be reaching at the highest position but if you are found, you are caught, you have to face this music. This uh, general education minister she has to resign and her PhD title was revoked because her PhD thesis was found plagiarized. Similarly, uh, there were some doctors in uh, this hospital. They were serious plagiarists. They did series of plagiarism. Even one of their articles was published with the two different titles in different journals. But later they were caught and they were punished. Uh, even some PhD guides were found using uh, plagiarized contents of their own colleagues. Uh, as I said, told you that vice chancellor also takes the duty. Sometimes a person can take extreme stab because of this. This gentleman Sasai, he was uh, one of the 11 authors in one paper and one of the 8 in another paper. And the, both the papers were 
found plagiarized and in the disgrace he committed suicide. Uh, similarly, there was a girl in uh, this uh, Peel Dharma South Gujarat University. She did amphil and uh, somebody complained that her amphil is plagiarized. And when this committee was investigating her case, she committed suicide because it was true she plagiarized the things. So th this is something which can destroy your life, it can destroy your career. Once you become a plagiarist, it is very difficult to get a good position. Give an example. I was, when I was in JNU, there was a position of assistant professor. So two, uh, a panel was made. So uh, the person who was in first in panel, I received uh, Paisons received a complaint against that person that uh, he has placed like the contents. So that uh, complaint was sent to me. I investigated and submitted a report to the vice chancellor and I said that it is true. So that person's uh, you know, uh, appointment was cancelled. Same time, the person who was uh, in number two, he was the complaint in that case. The first one also lodged a complaint against number two that he, she has also done the thing here. And it was the same story, she was also found. So that entire appointment was cancelled. And they were banned in JNU for applying for any position for five years. Although that was a different story for next few years, they were behind my life and targeting me on social media and uh, RTIs and all those things. But I never afraid of such nonsense. So uh, this is a very, very serious offense and uh, nobody should do it. Uh, and it is in the best interest of yourself. It is not in the interest of the university, it is more interest of yourself to have a good career in life. Nobody can protect.